This is an insight clip from the Dr. Geo Prostate Podcast. In this short segment, Dr. Michael Zalewski breaks down one of the biggest questions in prostate cancer care, surgery versus radiation. What's the truth? For full interview, episode 159 click at the end of this clip. Let's get into it. How is a patient to choose and at least be part of an intelligent conversation with their physicians about what's next after they've been diagnosed with prostate sure. cancer? And that's a, it's an incredibly important question and a loaded question as well, because but I've seen over the years how, and you're right, patients in the last five years, maybe with the help of the internet and the availability of the availability of so much more information, they are more educated about their, their, their options, no question about it. And the field has become so much more complicated that you're right. There are so many choices that when people walk into a room, they're extraordinarily confused. Yes, they want to be empowered, but they feel overwhelmed because of uh, how many things are really bombarded at them. And basically, for localized prostate cancer, and every everybody, you know, every stage is really differently and should be differently handled. But when I'm dealing with localized prostate cancer, I first you want to get all the information that is needed to assess the stage. Of course, the imaging, the biopsy, the genetic assessments, the deciphers, the Arteria AI the the PSA level, the kinetics of it. And that's what the doctors are there for to kind of amalgamate all the this information and help the individual patient. And then you have to factor in the patient, the comorbidities, the medical issues that the patient has. Is the patient suffering from serious heart related problems? Do they are they taking multiple medications? that there's more of an issue there where we have to factor in a number of aspects. Very importantly with prostate cancer and radiotherapy, what's their urinary status? You know, there's some patients who have terrible urinary symptoms to begin with because they have so uh, large a prostate or a lot of urinary obstructive symptoms. They're constantly going to the bathroom. Radiation may not be the ideal treatment. May, radiation may, may make that make worse, much right? Worse and impact on their quality of life. And sometimes people who have huge prostates, if we need to shrink them down with anti-hormones or hormones as we call them, that causes side effects as well. And and the decision to use hormones should be a factor. I don't want hormones. I'll take the surgery. And then there are, I kind of alluded to psychological or emotional considerations that I, I believe are some of the most important considerations. Because when all is said and done, and we have randomized trials, there's the old, what published in the New England Journal of Medicine, the PROTECT trial, that by the flip of a coin in the UK, in 15 years ago, some people had radiation, some people had surgery and watchful waiting, and there was no differences in survival. And nowadays, the radiation is only more precise and more effective. But any case, you're not going down the wrong track often if you take for localized prostate cancer surgery or radiation. You're going to do just as well and watch for waiting. And there was no differences in survival. And nowadays, the radiation is only more precise and more effective. But any case, you're not going down the wrong track often if you take for localized prostate cancer surgery or radiation. You're going to do just as well. But there's right. some people who are, pardon the pun, cut out for surgery. They want it out of their body. They will sleep better at night. And there are others that are, I want a less invasive approach. I'll be happier that way. If you could provide the same outcome and you don't have to remove the prostate cancer, great. Then there's some that, based on the side effects, will totally focus on there, which is appropriate too. Oh, incontinence, any kind of a risk? I don't want that. And many studies, as we all know, have shown that surgery has a little more of a risk of incontinence than radiation. But then there's some who say, well, if my symptoms are going to get worse with urination, I don't want the radiation either. And I think there are computer programs like apps 
But, I, you know, we I looked into that a long time ago, and I don't think they'd be so effective because I think we still, yeah, AI is really important, but I think person-to-person -person communication is never going to be replaced. And I think talking to the patient, understanding what is his what are his needs, what's important for him as far as quality of life preferences. That's what this is all about. And then trying to help the patient navigate along that path. I think that's the goal of the physician who is, who is managing prostate yeah. cancer. I had Bafara Day on who you know from Sloan. Great person, great interviewee and a great philosophy. He had a lot of philosophies. And we were talking in part about approach with patients in terms of how he communicates with them. And he tries to find out what's important to you. What do you value? I don't see too many physicians, urologists, surgeons, even radiation oncologists asking those type of questions that are profound, very important to figure out what is the next step. Absolutely. And if you don't ask those questions and you don't try to help the patient navigate through that, you're not in my opinion, you're not really providing a benefit for the patient and an opportunity to talk to an expert and help them navigate with you through this very complicated pathway. So I agree with you 100%. We must make every effort to try to understand what are the priorities of the patient, what's important. At the same time, we don't want to say, oh, this is important, but it's, you're going to be compromising your chances for cure or other opportunities like that. But if you have similar opportunities for getting rid of the cancer, you've got to focus on those priorities. It's key. I tell you what, Michael, if you figure out how to do hormone therapy in three months, maybe six months max on any cancer, then you, that would be a huge win just because I think when I'm listening to patients and they're trying to decide and I'm helping them as a prostate cancer navigator, help them decide what to do next. Um, that's the, that's the main thing that they're hesitant about it. Wow. I need hormone therapy for two years, for you know, 18 months. So I think looking into that and maybe with the new technology in terms of figuring out how aggressive the cancer really is, the biology of the tumor, um, that, that would be a good next step along with the future of focal therapy with sure. MR, LINAC, sure. or any other technology in radiation space. Uh, Dr. Michael Zalewski. Wow. What a pleasure. What a great conversation. I think that our audience will really, they really enjoy, have really enjoyed all your knowledge, expertise, or your wisdom. Any final thoughts to the person looking, trying to figure out, all right, God, I'm confused. I know you said much of it already, which is good. Any final thoughts on, hey, here's where we are in 2025. Look out for the future. Great things are happening. Any final thoughts in terms of inspiration, motivation, things will be fine for that, that patient that's watching that's trying sure. to figure it all out. The first thing is don't allow yourself, although difficult, don't allow yourself to get overwhelmed. Try your best. And some people are not cut out to do all of the research there. And if you're linking together with a prostate cancer physician, I think the goal is to be at those consultations, not to make a decision, but to learn, to be educated, and to and that obviously helps empower people as well, but to understand what their options are. Fortunately, nowadays, the success rates with prostate cancer are extraordinarily high. And I tell people, if you choose one thing or another, you say, oh, I'm afraid I'm going to choose this. It's a mistake. It's often not a mistake. Unlikely. Unlikely, it's a Unlikely mistake. it is a mistake. And yeah. you just use and focus on what your preference is. Sometimes I tell people it's not scientific, but if you're going to go to sleep at night and your gut is that you'd rather go this kind of an approach, then go with your gut, obviously with somebody who's an expert in navigating with you along the way, and that's going to go a long, long way. But don't be overwhelmed and don't be frightened because the therapies that are out there are outstanding nowadays. The success rates have been so much more improved over recent years. And the surgeons, to give some kudos to the surgeons, my goodness, I don't remember the last time I've seen an incontinence case after 
a person had a prostatectomy, not only in our institution, but, you know, any institution, any major institution, whether it's our neighbors, your old employer, MSK, say, uh, MSK. I don't remember last time. They're doing oh, great yeah. work as and well. It, it's the skills of the surgeons. And fortunately, we in, in, in many in New York have extraordinary experience. You just oh, you yeah. go where you're comfortable going and to give that inspiration or support. Yes, very often, as you said, you're not going to be making a mistake. Learn, be educated, and move forward, and likely all will be well. Thanks for watching. Catch the full episode on the Dr. Geo Prostate Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss our next insight. We're honored to be part of your prostate health journey.